Hey guys, so um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about Jimmy Dore to engage in a little bit of um, masochism since Vladim recommended that I react to his videos talking about Ukraine. Um, I didn't really listen to a lot of his videos before. Um, I am familiar with him and his positions and I guess I consider him a... Um, a leftist person, although it does seem that he's uh, criticizing the left a lot himself. Um, so anyway, uh, I've heard that uh, a lot of his positions are really, really cringe. So I just wanted to quickly react maybe to one of the most recent videos. I just did a quick search on my YouTube. Um, and the newest video seems to be Chomsky previous Trump on Ukraine, which is awesome. So I guess we can start with that. So let's go. I want to talk about uh, Noam Chomsky uh, said something that was amazing. So they were asking him about the Ukraine war. Now, I don't want to go into I, I, re-explaining how we got to the Ukraine war, just so you know. With the reason why uh, we're having here we go. I'm I'm guessing he's gonna explain it to us right now. Just for those who don't know, I've been living in Ukraine for 16 years. Um, I'm a refugee from Ukraine. I'm not Ukrainian, uh, but I'm I used to live there, and uh, my wife is Ukrainian, so we had to escape. Of course, of course, after the war started with our baby. Um, so I know a little bit about Ukraine. I know a little bit about the military and about the war and what's happening there. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm probably better informed than uh, Jimmy here, but let's see what he says. Having a Ukraine war is because the United States overthrew the government in Ukraine in 2014. And then that government that okay. we that we installed, a lot of the people in the eastern part of Ukraine didn't want to live with that government because they were... It was a coup government, and they were more Russian separatists. Okay, so what he said was, we started, the, the war started because we have overthrown the government. By we, he means, um, I guess, the U.S. The U.S. has overthrown the um, U, um, Ukrainian government. By the Ukrainian government, of course, he means uh, Viktor Yanukovych, who was very pro-Russian, but who was democratically elected. So I guess there's this conspiracy theory about the U.S. overthrowing the government behind this as well. And he's claiming that that is the reason for the war, which clearly the reason for the war is that Russia attacked Ukraine. <laughs> and there could have been some excuses for the war, but... You can't actually make war unless you actually start the war. So it's not like this was an aggression on Russia or anything like that. Anyway, let's go forward. And so they had a peace agreement and the government of Ukraine was supposed to leave those people along, alone in the eastern Ukraine. They didn't. Not <laughs> so this is becoming more uh, liberal uh, as we go. What happened was there was a, a revolution. Some people could call it a coup. I guess there is an argument to make that it was a coup, but I don't think it really was. I think it was just a regular, you know, revolution. Um, people went to protest. Uh, Yanukovych's police started shooting um, those people. Around a hundred people died as a result, and. Uh, yeah, he ran away to Russia. Um, he was replaced by um, a temporary government, and then they had elections. Now, of course, what happened at that point was Russia intervened as well and started supporting these separatist movements in the East, uh, which is now um, the Donbass region. Um, Ukraine has actually successfully started to reintegrate those uh, regions militarily, but then Russia intervened directly, as in actual soldiers on the ground, artillery, and so on. 
and basically stopped Ukraine from um, from doing that. So that's why there was the frozen war and all of that. So the aggression, again, to be clear, the aggression came from uh, the Russian side and came from the separatists backed by the Russian side. Um, now, there were agreements and uh, there was peace agreement. And then after that, um, there was a long period of both sides violating those agreements. Uh, so there would be provocation from one side, one side would shoot next to a residential building, the other side would respond, the residential building would get destroyed in the process, and civilians would die. And since it was a long time that this was happening, both soldiers and civilians died. So those would be the facts. Um, I think what he's saying here is a little bit biased. And so far, he is pretty much on the point with uh, Russia's versions of things. So let's see what happens next. Not only did they not leave them alone, they bombed them for eight years straight, killing at least 14,000 of them. And so that... I'm not sure about that figure, though. Let's do a quick search and uh, try and uh, find some data. I'm going to find super biased information, of course, according to Jimmy Dore, I'm sure. But let's see. Um, Donbass casualties. Let's see what this brings. So war in Donbass. Casualties. Uh, okay, so 14,000. This is where the number comes from. That is the total number of confirmed fatalities. 3,000. Okay, so this is the number I've seen. Uh, 3,404 civilians. The rest are soldiers. My understanding is that this is both sides, not just... Um, Not just the separatist. Yeah, so it's split here. Okay, so you can see how he's combining the whole thing. He's combining both sides into the casualties for whatever reason. So that would be very blatant misinformation. So basically, I think he just Googled this and saw the first number and just quoted that number. And Putin invaded to try to stop that. Well, um, sure, let's go on. Among other things. And uh, we've been threatening to put Ukraine in NATO. Plus, there's a gas pipeline called Nord Stream 2. So there's lots of things. It's none of the stuff you hear on the news is why... We've been threatening to put Ukraine uh, in NATO. I don't think that's actually true. I think Ukraine wanted to join NATO because they were afraid of, well, exactly this thing happening. However, um, NATO wouldn't take Ukraine. NATO doesn't want to take generally countries that have disputed territories like Ukraine. So, um, as Laden said just recently on another stream, it was pretty much um, not allowed by NATO's own rules to take Ukraine. However, NATO was doing exercises with Ukraine. Maybe that's interpreted here as threatening. I'm not sure. Ukraine definitely wanted to join NATO. Um, uh, Ukraine at some point during um, uh, Petro Poroshenko's rule, um, was the president before Zelensky and the first president after the revolution, after the um, the um, Yanukovych, uh, Yanukovych rule. He actually changed, made a proposal to change the constitution that was adopted and the constitution was changed to 
specify the strategic direction of Ukraine to be NATO and the EU. Honestly, that was purely a political point and a pretty stupid one for, for Poroshenko. He's a little bit less sophisticated than most politicians, I guess. So he was trying to gain political points, I think, by doing this. And by this, I think he just gave uh, a lot of uh, just ammo to the Russian side, probably in terms of uh, in terms of politics. What Ukraine war is happening? So that's um, the 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 pipeline is a separate topic, but I don't think it factored into the decision making on the military side a lot. It did somewhat, but I don't think it was a major factor at all. Um, I feel that Jimmy Dore would also claim that the Afghanistan war was um, uh, motivated by the rare minerals in Afghanistan and uh, so on. That's what I want you to understand. We provoked this, meaning the NATO and Joe Biden and the United States provoked this confrontation, and we're using the people of Ukraine as cannon fodder. And we all know how this is going to end. It's all, it's going to end with a peace negotiation where Putin gets what he wants, meaning a neutral Ukraine. And we all know that's how it's going to end up. So that's what I want, you know. But now, and but the weird thing is to see everybody be easily propagandized into wanting to have a war with Russia, which is a nuclear power, which means the end of civilization. So listen to what Chomsky says about this. Who's the one guy? So, of course, um, a lot a lot has been said here, but it's mostly, I would say, um, rhetorical. <laughs> I don't think it's a, I don't think it's actually, um, I don't think it, it, uh, it makes any sense what he just said. I think it's a, um, <laughs> it, it's um what, what he's just gush galping basically as as if debating with somebody and trying to just talk over them he's pumping a lot of things into what he's saying so the language is very loaded and what he's what he's claiming is mostly not true most of these things are are not true at all um as you can see the war with Russia, of course, clearly isn't necessarily nuclear, right? Um, you can see that the, the the war hasn't gone nuclear yet, and it's possible, but it's definitely not a given that the war will become nuclear. Uh, so just by going to war with Russia doesn't mean that uh, that the war will be will become nuclear immediately so, just by going to war with Russia. Okay, let's uh, go a little bit forward. Who's actually seeking a peace deal? Let's listen to Chomsky. Well, there is fortunately one statesman in the United States and Europe, who has laid out a person of a high political figure who has made a very sensible statement about how you can solve the crisis, namely by facilitating negotiations instead of undermining them and uh, moving towards establishing some kind of accommodation in Europe. So what he's saying is not because we've been undermining, meaning the United States and NATO have been undermining the peace negotiations. So that's what he's saying. Where Instead of doing that. Maybe a long uh, in which there are no military alliances, but just mutual accommodation. Uh, he didn't say it, but it's something like uh, what George H.W. Bush, the first Bush, not the second, uh, proposed in the early 90s in his, when after the collapse of the Soviet Union, proposed what they called a partnership for peace, 
which would be open for Europeans generally, Eurasians as well. It wouldn't eliminate NATO, but he would live up to the promise that NATO would not expand to the east, firm promise to Gorbachev, keep to that, well, NATO there, but kind of de-emphasize it so other countries could join, including Russia for that matter. Just to be clear, um, the promise did not apply to Ukraine. <laughs> Uh, because Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union back then. It was strictly in the scope of uh, talks about Germany. So there was, the, the promise had nothing to do with the current situation. And that promise has been actually followed, as Gorbachev has said. So um, this is a this is an argument. I'm, I'm a little surprised that uh, uh, that Noam Chomsky is talking about this because uh, I, I was expecting a little bit more from him, I guess. Or join the partnership for peace. Uh, Tajikistan joined, for example, not NATO, and moved towards a world, a Europe, Eurasia, with no military alliances. Actually, de Gaulle had similar vision. Uh, Emmanuel Macron in his initiatives trying to contact Putin suggested something similar. So going back to the one Western statesman, he didn't mention all of this, but he suggested something similar. Move towards negotiations and diplomacy instead of escalating the war. Uh, try to see if he can bring about an accommodation. Uh, which would be roughly along these lines. Uh, his name is Donald J. Trump. Wow. And now you know the rest of the story. Boy, talk about a buildup. Did that guy bury the leader? What? Mm -hmm. But the whole so the whole point of that was Chomsky, who, by the way, is the biggest Donald Trump maniac in the world. There's nobody has Trump derangement syndrome worse than Chomsky. So that's why it's if Chomsky is making the point that the only Western statesman who's offering a peace initiative is Donald Trump, I think we should listen to it. And why should we listen to <laughs> Or, <laughs> or maybe we could, uh, maybe we could make another uh, conclusion and say that uh, both Tom Chomsky and Trump are wrong about this, right? to it because let's listen to what he said before about donald trump uh do you think that this is an uh, easy decision uh in terms of voting for biden over trump or over the green party or anyone else or do you think it's difficult well first of all i would take the traditional left opinion and say i think it's a completely uh not even controversial that we should vote against trump now it happens in the system that exists voting against trump means taking five minutes and pushing a lever for the opposition, okay? That's a very small part of politics. Politics is the daily activism constantly that's teaching people why Trump is a, one of the, fact of the matter, the most dangerous uh, figure in human history. I'm not sure why we're watching this part, I guess, to show how uh, anti-Trump Chomsky was and then to legitimize his argument in some way by saying that he was against Trump but now he's siding with Trump even though he hates Trump because this thing is just very very important or that somehow legitimizes him in terms of in terms of the argument I don't, I don't understand um, I, I feel that uh, Trump and Chomsky and probably Jimmy here have very similar position in terms of uh, foreign foreign affairs, which would be isolationist, I guess, cutting the um, cutting the military budget, um, not going to any of the wars, keeping you know staying minding our own business, things like that. So. I don't see how this is um, surprising that Noam Chomsky is siding with Trump. Trump is a populist. 
Noam Chomsky is a populist. Jimmy is probably a populist as well. And it just makes a lot of sense. Um, the basic argument here is to negotiate, 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 stop the war by any cost, blah, blah, blah. Um, I guess maybe he'll elaborate a little bit more about that. Literally, there has been no one else, Hitler, anyone else, who was dedicated to destroying the prospects of human life on Earth in the next, in the short term. And that's exactly what he's doing. So if you, the reason why, so there was Chomsky trying to get people to vote against Donald Trump and vote for Joe Biden. And the rationale he gave okay. was he was the most dangerous person, more dangerous than Hitler. Well, now, now he's saying, oh, Donald Trump is the only guy who's actually talking about peace. He's the only guy who. So first of all, that's not true. Many people are talking about peace, first of all. Maybe he's referring to surrendering, which is a different thing. I guess it's one way of uh, achieving peace, right? But I wouldn't call that talking about peace. And in general, I think the left is talking about absolutely the same thing that uh, Chomsky is talking about. Mainstream media, of course, is not because yeah, mainstream media doesn't really cover um, things that way, it never has. Um, mainstream media is usually hawkish. So sure, um, most Republicans, I guess, are supporting Ukraine and continuing the war, but I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of Trump um, aligned people who are, who have just recently voted against the land lease um, um, act. So uh, again, <laughs> I'm having trouble understanding why this is surprising. Maybe people um, identify with persons instead of uh, positions, but this position seems to me, uh, seems to be very cookie cutter, uh, left leaning um, slash libertarian maybe position wants diplomacy in Ukraine. He's the only guy who's trying to avoid World War III. It's Donald Trump, the guy who, well, I, there is. who I used to say was the most dangerous human in the history of mankind, worse than Hitler. And now, well, reality isn't that way. So when we told you that Chomsky was out of his mind with uh, Trump derangement syndrome, we weren't lying. There it is. He was. He's not. He's out of his mind. And now, even a guy who's that out, gone, that far gone, can st still, he's not a liar. Chomsky's not a liar. So he has to tell the truth. And the truth is, he watches what's happening. And Trump is the only guy that is pushing for a peace of, uh, and diplomacy in Ukraine. And also, by the way, what other guy on TV besides Tucker Carlson is doing that? Is anybody at MSNBC telling you the truth about Ukraine? Is anybody at CNN mm, telling you the truth not, about Ukraine? Is anybody else at Fox telling you that? No. It's one guy, and you should all be embarrassed because you say that guy's the worst guy in the world, yet he's outdoing you. You're going to... Okay, so I guess he's not talking to just liberals, um, which is fine. Um, uh, again, <laughs> the mainstream media will not, um, will not be taking this position. Let's maybe take a step back and talk about the position itself. The position is Ukraine should stop fighting. Ukraine should stop resisting. Ukraine should either surrender or uh, beg Russia to go to the negotiating table on pretty much any terms just to stop the war. Because if we continue fighting, then we may have World War III. And also, there is no way for Ukraine to win. So this is part of the same argument. There's no way for Ukraine to win. They should surrender. They should stop fighting. We should go to the negotiating table. We should talk. We should stop fighting. We should uh, uh, stop the escalation. We should stop helping them. In other words, let Russia win. So this is this is the argument. Um, th there is no actual factual support for this. First of all, Russia themselves did don't want to negotiate. Um, 
Ukraine does not want to negotiate themselves. So if we're talking from the perspective of the United States, then stopping, then helping Ukraine, stopping to help Ukraine will just m increase the suffering because Ukraine will not surrender themselves. Um, now, if you're arguing for, hey, let's persuade Ukraine to do that, um, okay, but in that case, what we're basically doing is allowing country to invade another country and then forcing that other country to surrender just because of the potential for uh, Russia to escalate and just because they're keeping the whole world hostage. By that logic, Putin can go to whatever next country he wants, do the same thing, and then do it again and again and again. There's no stopping him because he will always say, sure, yeah, I'll go, I'll escalate, I'll use, the, uh, use nuclear weapons. If there are no consequences to what he's doing, if we're rewarding the, him by giving him territory and allowing him to violate decades of norms, um, I feel that that would set a terrible precedent for anything else. If anything, we have already set a really bad precedent with letting him have Crimea and letting him uh, escalate and keep the conflict frozen on Donbass since 2014. So if we're going to allow this, which is basically aggressing and then taking territory and then keeping that territory, I don't feel that that is a good thing to do with somebody like Putin. Um, there are many, many arguments that I can uh, talk about that, that will um, that take more time to talk about, so I, I'm not going to go into them right now, but I feel this is one of the main ones that it's just a terrible, terrible idea to um, allow Putin to uh, get away with invading another country, taking their territory, scaring the world away, and then possibly doing it again with another country or more of Ukraine. To let Tucker Carlson do a better job of reporting on Ukraine than Chris Hayes? Yes, the answer is yes. Tucker Carlson doing a much better job. Trump also proposing peace. It's kind of crazy, isn't it, Kurt? So again, proposing peace um, sounds simple, but it, it really isn't. If we look at what Russia was doing in uh, Chechnya, the um, negotiations were used only to regroup, reinforce, uh, basically just as a way to stall uh, and to um, increase their own strength and then just resume fighting. Russia is not great with negotiations um, and generally they just want to win just like anybody else. Um, in this case, I feel with Ukraine, I just don't see a way for negotiations to bring peace at all. Uh, contrary to popular opinion and intuitive reasoning, I, I don't feel that negotiations will be successful at all um, in this war. The only way that negotiations may be successful is if we force Russia to come to the negotiation negotiating table themselves and say, hey, let's negotiate, uh, we're losing this war which, you know, they say every war ends with negotiations, but remember how the World War II ended, uh, how World War I ended. Wars do end with negotiations, but it's very important to understand what position the opposing parties are when the negotiations start. So Russia's whole thing is to be at the strongest possible position before those inevitable negotiations. Um, yeah, well, Noam Chomsky, like, I saw him years ago on a, I think it was like Penn. This guy has an awesome background. I mean, when I use that as well. And tell his bullshit. And, you know, he, I think that him coming up with manufacturing consent, I think he like, will sometimes 
employ that like yes he manufactured people like mm-hmm. yeah like like he spotted it and then he's not above using it when it <laughs> like <Yeah>. suits him <clears throat> like uh i saw him on a pen teller bullshit episode against free speech he said some well communities it was back shout out to uh pen teller hey when they're talking about how on the campuses there was back when it was really starting to brew he was defending that nonsense it's such a problem now it's just funny like watching him like die like i i don't get what his uh I don't know. He talks out of both sides of his mouth, put it that way. Yeah, definitely. And sometimes when it suits him, he manufactures consent and uses those techniques that he outlined. And sometimes when it, uh, he also. But how? I mean, we may not agree with Chomsky's positions, but they seem pretty consistent to me. It's just, uh, it's just a lefty. He seems to be pretty liberal. I'm pretty sure that he did actually. Um, uh, he he did criticize Russia. He's not supporting the invasion itself. It's just that he thinks that the war is not winnable. I don't see anything inconsistent in that with um, criticizing Trump. I don't see supporting Trump in one particular position as being inconsistent with overall voting for Trump. So... I'm just a little bit confused here. It tells the truth, which is what he's doing in this case. So thank God. So that what a shocker. I wonder what people are going to say. Uh, I'm going to guess that most people are going to ignore this, that Chomsky said this. And it, just like they're ignoring the fact that we should have a peaceful settlement, settlement and use diplomacy. And- as far as I've seen on Twitter, when Chomsky did uh, talk about this, um, people didn't ignore it. He he got a lot of flack for uh, his opinion, which maybe he deserves, but you know I don't think it's being ignored in any way. I think it was pretty public. In Ukraine, instead of sanctions and military, thirty-three billion dollars in military. Okay, so Jimmy is against sanctions and military, so he's basically just for letting Russia win as quickly as possible. Uh, you know, forcing Ukraine to surrender. Okay. Aid. We should be trying to not do that. We should not drag this war out. This is only going to slaughter more people in Ukraine. The more military aid we give them, the worse it is for them. Go ahead. The more military aid we give them, the worse it is for them. So, so Bucha, for example, was occupied. So they didn't surrender, but they were occupied and a lot of people die there i have no reason to believe why that wouldn't happen elsewhere god only knows what's happening in mariupol right now that is occupied um i i don't see how letting ukraine lose ukraine would definitely fight till the last man and woman how that would reduce suffering i'm not sure go ahead kurt I care about the people of Ukraine so much that I would rather they were dead than Putin <laughs> be happy. <laughs> so this is. Oh my God! This is such a stupid argument. Okay. <laughs> what? Why is it? Uh, why is it better to allow Russia to destroy the Ukraine's military and to? I mean, even with the army that Ukraine had initially, even without the help. They would be fighting until the end, and people would definitely die. It's not like Ukraine would just drop the weapons and surrender. Initially, there was no help at all, and Ukraine was fighting and winning, by the way. So is the argument here to take away the javelins and all the weapons that we've been giving them? or? Again, this taps into that Trump derangement syndrome, so somehow we can punch Putin in the nose and how is this about Trump it's just like punching Trump in the nose and that's what that's that's how that's how the propaganda is working this time we're doing live stand-up show okay so um at least one of my brain cells has died and I'm gonna uh I'm gonna finish here thank you a lot for making me go through this 
this was extremely uh cringy and um uh, i mean <laughs> the positions that he's having and the obvious conspiracy theories behind those positions do deserve um some exploration i guess but from what i've heard here it's very simplistic it's very intuitive reasoning without the actual facts supporting things and it does seem it's pretty much following the russian talking points i don't think the reason is that russia is paying jimmy door i think that it's just one it's it's evidence of russia's propaganda working i guess and those talking points i guess finding um fertile ground so wow okay um yeah i don't know if i'm gonna watch any more of his videos i may but been interesting um i'm not gonna say don't watch jimmy door i think it's useful to watch people like this and i would definitely not ban them or remove them from youtube or whatever people seem to be suggesting maybe Vladan's one of those people but um yeah i mean let him express his opinion and um i wish there was a you know a debate of some sort where somebody could confront these talking points because right here he's probably just preaching to the choir and uh his um his subscribers are probably just you know eating this without without any critical thinking at all yeah so anyway have fun um and uh talk to you later